today I'm in the talking mode. So, you know, I'm going to go for it. So let's talk about people who um, get out of relationships and speak ill of people, you know. I would want to say that I'm a better person, but I think we've all done this, which is, you know, low to do such things. But I think that, I think that um, if you've been in relationships with people, whether they are good people or wrong people, I think there is a time you connected for a reason. And if you connected for a reason, I feel like um, ignoring the fact that there was something in common between you people is like where is the lesson like it's like basically like saying you haven't learned a thing from it which is a sad thing like you know like intimate relationships people who um have dated they date they get into this relationship they're so in sync then when they break up it's like oh that part, that human being was a was a devil all that time, like, didn't you realize that these people are demons during the time when you were with them? Like, you, when you connected with them, <laughs> no judgment here, but I'm just saying, like, if you connected with people at a certain point in your life, it says a lot about where you are also in your life. So, let's appreciate people you know they were good for the time when they you know it was good for that moment there are people who also it's good to realize that just because it did not work out uh with you does not mean they are bad people it just means they are not meant for you you know you're not meant for them which is a good thing that you didn't spend your entire life with these people just to realize this fact later on in life you know so let's be kind you know because most of us we've met good people even when they've done the wrong things if they never um did certain things we wouldn't be the people we are because those things challenged our to patterns you know it challenged our beliefs it challenged you know how we see ourselves our perspective about life and if it changed you for the better if it made you strong however way it brought you into that you know that dimension you know be happy for it you know instead of spending your entire life being bitter about what people did or what people didn't do spend your life appreciating that because they did whatever they did it made you better it made you who you are today you might not be a better person today but you could do better that's up to you that's like your choice your choice to be better or not to be better that's you know you get to decide who you are at the end of the day it's not a it's not a responsibility of what the other person did or didn't do it's you who chooses who you are every day no matter how much pain you've gone through you know and i f i think that getting out of those situations you know this is something i always say every day of my life no matter how like no matter how bad of a situation i go through i always remind myself i will never get through that situation again i will never find myself in that position again and if i do i know better i'm stronger for it i can do it you know i can overcome i know i'm capable of it and more so it's like you can't fall into the same pit you fell into you know before you know better like your skill that's like wisdom put in you automatically your instincts you know your spirit your body everything in you reacts differently to that sort of situation so let's not um carry things of the past as if they were um a bad thing and um and by this i don't mean like you know there are things you can talk about to help people from those situations that's a plus it's not like 
because I find that a lot of people make it seem as if simply because you overcame a situation, you're not supposed to talk about it. You can talk about it. I've uh, I've been in situations where I've talked about my bad situations and it has helped heal someone, you know, or someone has spoken about their bad situation and it has given me the experience without having to live through it. So let's stop confining people in boxes, stop confining uh, people in our past in the same old patterns, especially if you're seeing them like do their work to change because everyone changes. You know, I'm not the same person I was like last year. You know, as humans, you're supposed to change. If you're not changing, what is wrong with you? Start changing, start doing better. It means if, you know, and there's also this thing about people saying you changed, you changed. You know, if I'm changing, great, you know. Applause for me, clap for me, you know. No, no human being was created to be the same. Only God is supposed to be the, the one who doesn't change. Because he's supreme, he knows all things, he's all wisdom, you know. So, if you're a human being and you get offended by people saying you've changed, <laughs> you need to ask God to help you. Like, you need to be changing. If you can change, like, and I don't mean the type of change where your character is going from bad to worse, that's not the type of change you want. Change in a way that you're better, better between you and God. If you stand before the presence of God, you know you're better, not worse. Because if you define yourself by people's um, standards of change, people have a funny way of saying you can change, but don't be this, don't be that. It's up to you to change according to your conscience. You know, your conscience will always tell you if you're doing better or if you're doing worse. And I know people like to pretend like they're so, um, what's it called? Like they're, you know, like they're doing so good and they're doing so bad. But at the end of the day, when you go and sit by yourself, between you and God, you know when you're doing right. Like, it's not pretension. Is it pretension or pretentious? You know what I mean. Whatever that word is, you can't pretend before the one who made you. So be better for it, you know. Do better for it and leave um, society to its own ways, you know. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, if you're here, thank you for your support. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your time. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope that um, you had a great holiday. I hope, like, you've written down your resolutions. You know, hopefully not new ones because <laughs> if you're writing new resolutions, it means that you still um, haven't figured out you know, it's like you're not living in your area of calling. You're not living out your passions. You're supposed to be writing how to be better. Your resolution is supposed to be about doing better, like improving, upgrading on what you're already doing, you know. But if you're starting off, that's also a good thing. So, you know, I wish you the best. I wish you prosperity, love. I wish you healing not just to yourself, but also to the people you're surrounded with. I wish you, I pray for you, actually. I pray good things for you, you know. I pray humility for you, and I pray discernment for you, and joy, and I pray thick skin for you, you know, persistent and consistency and discipline for you. And anyway, thank you so much, and God bless you. I love you all. Ended Escobar. Ah, no. Ending Escobars for the same things they legalize now makes me question what society is picking now to end who's next. Is it our hearts, our bodies, our spirits? Maybe it's our faith, our rights, our birthmarks, or our scars, our strengths, our weaknesses. Choosing leaders hoping to end corruption. These days we choose leaders hoping they'll at least let us live in peace and unity while they bury generations in more corruption. Nowadays I question all the rules, the beliefs, 
because of greed I have to ask is this church God's temple or are we the temple being defiled? Man's greed like mud upon God's robes. No boundaries, they call it selling hope. So a man eat food from a town being with hundreds of people looking just passing by and my spirit couldn't take it. That we're so caught up with our pride, our egos, we can't see who's lacking, who's really grasping at life. I know I'm no better. It took me years to realize that my path would have been different if my subconscious was consciously conscious. I have no regret, so I'm making up time for all the impact healing I could have expressed then and now. Mama said family is important. I agree. I think family is who you're healing, who you're loving. Don't count on reciprocation. Good souls count their blessings by their existence and how they used it, gave it. When I kneel, I pray for blood and family ties. Grandma says great work. I should be proud of what it is. But it still doesn't feel like I'm doing enough. If money was the scale, maybe I'd sleep enough. Counting my offering by God's time, pray fulfill his purpose before the end of time. Okay, I keep doing this again and again because sometimes I get parts wrong or I change stuff. Okay. Okay, one, two, go. Can you even see? Okay. Ending Escobars for the same things they legalize now makes me question what society is picking now to end who's next. Is it our hearts, our bodies, our spirits? Maybe it's our faith, our rights, our birthmarks, or our scars, our strengths, our weaknesses. Choosing leaders hoping to end corruption. These days we choose leaders hoping they'll at least let us live in peace and unity while they bury generations in more corruption. Nowadays I question all the rules, the beliefs. Because of greed I have to ask, is this church God's temple or are we the temple being defiled? Man's greed like mud upon God's robes. No boundaries, they call it selling hope. So a man eat food from a town being with hundreds of people looking just passing by. And my spirit couldn't take it that we're so caught up with our pride, our egos. We can't see who's lacking, who's really grasping at life. I know I'm no better. Okay. I know I'm no better. It took me years to realize that my path could have been different if my subconscious was consciously conscious. I have no regrets, so I'm making up time for all the... Okay, I have to repeat this part again. I know I'm no better. It took me years to realize that my path could have been different. If my subconscious was consciously conscious, I have no regrets, so I'm making up time for all the impact healing I could have expressed then and now. Mama said family is important. I agree. I think... Okay, so I'm just going to uh, do this Swahili one. I don't know if I've done it before, but just to be safe, I'm going to do it again. Mimi Mbariki Wam say, anointed with joy, even my enemies catch the laughter, anointing wanna check her each time I move. God asante kwa baraka, heshima nikipita hadi pepo zinapiga makofi na tang, jani ulimi. Nisha jua mimi nawe ya kuna udogo ndani yangu, wewe shuja. Mimi nita kubebea sword kama golf cart, sijui carrier. Your servant ina feel kama your highness. Mimi si rapa lakini wewe ndani yangu, mimi ni kila kitu already. I feel like Swahili ones are easier. The English one actually was supposed to be too short, but it's becoming like longer longer than I expected you know okay. okay this takes you know usually a shorter time I don't know I maybe I need a break you know just chill stop overthinking the words you know catch my breath or do it simply just the audio because I feel like sometimes the camera, you know, makes me more nervous, you know. So sometimes I prefer recording just the sound and combining it with a video instead of like filming exactly what I'm doing. But you know, the point is to keep growing. You can't keep doing the same thing over and over again. Eventually, I want to be able to like do this from straight from my mind, you know. Like instead of writing it down, I can just say it. 
you know, M the Eminem kind of way, the Jay-Z kind of way. You know, just speak it as I think it, you know. So, yeah. Maybe that's like my next challenge. Maybe that should be my New Year's resolution. You know, speak words as I think it. Which mostly sometimes it doesn't make sense, but you know, you learn from practice. Practice makes perfect. As J. Cole said, if practice, what did J. Cole say? I'll just insert it here because I can't remember the exact words. But, you know, that's the whole point. Do, you know, and the thing is when you start doing like things you're passionate about, you realize that new things keep coming up and they come up in a different way like i used to just write stuff i used to discard like the things i say in an audio like um the christmas edition audios i used to discard all that stuff because when i write the things i write they seem so different from the things i'm now saying out loud so now I don't get to discard anything. I keep all of them, then I use them, you know, which is a plus for me because I feel like it's more ways for me to grow. So you see, when you start doing what you love, just things start growing, you know. You start having growth. But when you sit, you know, when you sleep on... Is, it, is that even grammatical to say? When you ignore or you have inactive passions, they never have like the chance to grow. Using your passion is the same thing as watering your passions. It's the seed. It's like watering a seed. They just have to grow. They keep growing. You keep growing. You have like confidence in certain areas where you didn't have confidence in, you know, from practice. And also, um, you know, you get to appreciate the process. You know, people see usually the final uh, cut. The thing they judge is actually the final cut. They don't get to see, like, the hard work you put in and the, um, the struggle that comes with it. But you get to appreciate it. So when anyone says something negative about it, because you understand the process of it, you're proud of it anyways because you know this wasn't easy. It was worse than what they're actually judging. So, yeah. So you appreciate your process. You don't have to wait for people to appreciate your process. You just do it by yourself. So anyway, guys, um, thank you for your time and thank you for being here. I love you and I appreciate you and God bless you. Like, share, subscribe.